If you're interested in consciousness, the study of what goes on in your mind, there's some excellent books out there. Take this one, Theater of the Mind, Raising the Curtain on Consciousness. It's by me. But you know what? We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a new book, a hardcover. Mmm, not one of those crummy soft covers. The Head Trip, Adventures on the Wheel of Consciousness by Jeff Warren. And Jeff joins me here in the Daily Planet studio. So, Jeff, hi. Adventures on the Wheel of Consciousness. What's that all about? Well, it's kind of complicated, Jay. So I think maybe the easiest thing to do is just to show you. Okay. So, Jeff, why'd you bring me here? Uh, I, Jay, I'm interested in the changing experience of consciousness. And I think ordinarily when we think about how we're aware, uh, we think about we're awake, and then and that's kind of like the living room. We think about we're asleep, which is sort of like the bedroom. And then we think about dreaming, which is sort of a little room off the bedroom. So we think of a three-room apartment. We got a lot more than that here, though. There's a lot more rooms in our minds, and I guess that's what this is about. The, the mansion is the best metaphor to describe that we have all of these different rooms, ballrooms, pantries of consciousness. And I want to take you on a tour through the mansion. In there? Let's go. All right, let's do it. After you. Thanks, Jeff. So, Jeff, this is a pretty nice room. Regular daily consciousness. It's the usual thing. <laughs> Comfortable, a little yep. bit bland. You know, yep. we're getting out of this room right now because there's a lot more interesting rooms that we're going to get to. We're going to go upstairs. I'm going to take you up right now. Okay. And it's going to get a lot weirder. All right, great. Let's go. I'm all for weird. Jay, welcome to the Sensory Gateway. Boy, it's solid. It's the primary dividing line of consciousness, and for that reason, it's very important. On this side of the Sensory Gateway, the waking side, our entire experience of the world is mediated by sensory input. Right, like seeing and hearing and all that like stuff. Like seeing and hearing. On the far side, the sleep and dreaming side, the sensory input is removed, and we move through a world mediated by experience and memory. We call this dreaming. Let's go. Let's go through. So Jay, the thing about the sensory gateway is, in waking, the enti our entire experience of the world is it's constrained. Sensory input constrains everything. Right. But on this side, sensory input is removed and our minds float free. Woo. That means all kinds of wild things can happen. I bet. And including this first room, which is the hypnagogic room. All right. So this room is the state of consciousness that we all move through at the beginning of sleep. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I want you to think of thinking as being like on a train. Ordinarily in waking, we move along a pretty straight linear track. Right. However, in the hypnagogic state, things are a little bit different. Our thoughts are no longer constrained in the same way, so they start to skip all over the place. All of a sudden, instead of one track, we're jumping onto another track, and to another track, and to another track. Our thoughts get more and more associative and further and further removed from our waking preoccupations. And are we controlling that? We're not controlling it. I mean, you're seeing strange images, you're having strange thoughts, but you've never questioned the thoughts that you get. So you find yourself thinking about nailing melted cheese to the wall without so much as a raised internal eyebrow. And it looks like we're about to arrive at our next stop. Hey, wait a minute here. What's going on? I, I move fast to the dream world, Jay. We're in a giant bed. This is called the slow wave. The slow wave is like being in a bed in the bottom of the ocean. It's the deepest stage of sleep. We enter into it mostly in the first half of the night, and very little in the way of mentation seems to be going on when sleep scientists wake people up then. Anything going on? Well, literally, you know, a, a vaguely remembered to-do list. However, some people report full-blown dreams, and other people s say it's a state of intense bliss. But the fact is, the slow wave is a mystery. Okay, we've breached the surface of sleep into a state of consciousness which I call the watch. What's that? The watch is very interesting. We wake up, most of us wake up 10 to 12 times a night without ever realizing it. You know, they're so short we forget them. Yeah. There's really intriguing scientific and historical evidence to suggest we were once awake for much longer in the night. Wow. And it's a very interesting state to be awakened because high amounts of the, the hormone called prolactin kind of percolate through the brain. So we're in a kind of state of relaxed, meditative calm. Huh. Welcome to the watch, very relaxing. 
So Jeff, this has been great, but we haven't even been dreaming yet. That's what we're going to next, Jay, except to a very particular and specific and thrilling kind of dream. It's called lucid dreaming. Are you ready, Jay? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do it. Oh, watch out, look, look! Be careful! It's, it's a dragon, and if this was a normal dream, you'd be in a lot of trouble. However... No kidding! Jay, this is not a normal dream. This is a lucid dream. And there's a big difference in lucid dreams. So why don't you turn your back to that dragon? Yeah, I can't turn... Trust me, turn your back on the dragon. Okay. Are you sure about this? I am sure. See, ordinarily in dreams, we respond automatically to threats. We run around like chickens without our heads. We never think about what's going on. We never think it's absurd. Lucid dreams are different. In a lucid dream, it's like all of these waking capacities, reason, memory, intentionality, self-consciousness, agency, they kind of fire back up. They come back online, and we can kind of beam down to the factory floor of the dream and do whatever we want. We don't have to respond to threats automatically. Anything? We can do anything? You can do whatever you like. How about this? Nice one. So when does lucid dreaming happen? Anytime we dream, but most often in the early morning. But Jay, we're done with dreaming and sleep now. We're heading back downstairs into waking. So Jay, we're back at the sensory gateway, and mm -hmm. this time we're heading through into waking and the world of sensory input. Okay, let's... Whoa, classic parasomnia. Sleep paralysis, actually, is what you've got, Jay. That's why you can't talk. In fact, that's why you can't move any of your muscles. What's happened is, even though you're awake, the part of your brain that administers um, paralysis during sleep and dreaming is still intact. So you're frozen, and yet you're totally awake and conscious. Now, people have this happens to a lot of people in the mornings, and it's, it's, it's very scary and very terrifying. Because in addition to the paralysis, you can have whole hallucinations from the dream world sort of superimposed over waking. So this is thought to be perhaps what's going on with the phenomenon of alien abductions. Fortunately, Jay, it doesn't last forever. You can move now. So the thing about waking consciousness, Jay, is it's not as bland and predictable as you might think. In fact, it can be downright psychedelic. So the trance is an intensely focused style of attention. The peripheral world kind of shears off, and we narrow in on a specific beam of attention, something very concentrated and central. Like what? See that bullseye at the end of the hallway? Right. Stare at that bullseye. Buy my book. Buy my book. Buy so hypnotists take book. advantage of the trance state, Jay, Buy to impose specific book. suggestions on their book. subjects. No. Buy my book. Buy my book. Hey. So is it understood what goes on in the brain when you're hypnotized? Uh, it's not entirely understood, but some of the findings suggest that there's a kind of frontal lobe inhibition. So some of those executive functions are compromised. So that's why people will do things under hypnosis that they wouldn't normally do? Exactly. They don't feel embarrassed about it. There's not the same kind of inhibitions. Now, the other big phenomenon with hypnosis is people actually see hallucinations or hear audio hallucinations. And what's happening there is you can think of it as a bit of like the dream world is seeping into the waking world. They're really experiencing those hallucinations. Buy my book. Buy my book. Hey, you know, I'd like to regain some control here. I got the room for you, Jay. This one is sort of the waking equivalent of a lucid dream. Very clear, very mindful, lots of control. I love it. It's called the sensory motor rhythm room, which is a terrible name for a state of consciousness, but it's what we got. Okay. Now remember, I want control. You want some control? Yeah. Take this tennis ball, mm -hmm. throw it in the air. Okay. Have you ever played tennis, Jay? Yeah. Well, I've played as well, and when you throw the ball in the air, there's that moment when the ball, before it's come back down, it's still sort of hovering in the air, and there's, for you, there's a feeling of a mix of anticipation and calmness. You know, as soon as it comes back down, you hit the ball, the action proceeds. Well, in that moment of anticipation and calmness, a very specific uh, bit of electrical activity appears over the sensory motor cortex. That's called the sensory motor rhythm. It's associated with a reduction in sensory input and motor output. So it appears when you're very calm and very alert. And the interesting thing about the sensory motor rhythm is you can learn to produce more of it. So it's another state of consciousness. Yeah. 
That's one amazing place and an amazing tour. Mansion of the mind. So the thing about it is it's not just a, a fun tour you can do. It's also important scientifically because it, it, uh, it, if you want to understand how consciousness works, you need to look at how experience changes from the inside, waking, sleeping, and dreaming. So, and, and I guess the other thing to say is that I only showed you five, six, seven rooms. Yep. There are dozens of rooms of consciousness available to all of us in all kinds of different times. I'll book another tour. All right, I'll take you on it. Thanks, Jeff.